Top 10 Haunted Places in Florida St. Augustine Lighthouse, St. Augustine Built in the mid-1500s and stands 164 feet tall. Tall, thin, man dressed in blue jacket and mariner's cap. Seen walking up and down the spiral staircase or looking down from the catwalk. Some believe it to be William Russell Lighthouse Keeper from 1850s. Others believe it to be Joseph Andreu fell from top scaffolding in 1859 while putting on a fresh coat of paint. In 1872, the lighthouse was under construction that was overseen by Hezekiah Pitti. Pitti, his wife, and their daughters lived in the lighthouse while being under construction. Pitti's daughters and their friends played with a rail cart the construction workers used to transport supplies. While playing one day, the cart came off the tracks and the girls went tumbling into the water below. Some of the girls were rescued in time but both of Pity's daughters died at sea. Reports of girls giggling and dirty, child-sized footprints found on the lighthouse floors. The woman on the catwalk. It is rumored to be Maria Mestra de las Dolores. She was the first woman to serve in the U.S. Coast Guard, and the first Hispanic American woman to command a federal shore installation. She was married to Joseph Andreu. The apparition of Maria can be seen looking down from the catwalk where her husband's body once lied. Castillo de San Marcos, St. Augustine. Constructed in 1672 by Spanish government. Prison to Native Americans. Osceola was a Native American leader and member of Seminole tribe. Captured by military in 1837. Suffering from chronic malaria, tonsillitis and abscesses before imprisonment. Dr. Whedon was called to treat Osceola and they became close. Three months after his capture, Osceola died of quinsy, an infection in the back of the throat. He died in South Carolina. Dr. Whedon took his friendship with Osceola to different turn with the doc decided to honor his friend by removing his head to keep as a memento. Whedon cut off his head, wrapped the cut with a scarf, and took some of the chief's belongings. To preserve his head, he placed it in a jar of alcohol and returned to St. Augustine and displayed it in his drugstore. Reports of unexplained shadows walking in the grounds, seeing a headless apparition, drops in temperature, sudden chills, and hearing disembodied voices. A local man was walking when he heard a sound coming from one of the walls. He removed some of the bricks and light up the space with his lantern to find two skeletal remains chained to the wall. Colonel Garcia Marti and his wife Dolores arrived at St. Augustine to start a new life. Colonel Marti was assigned Captain Manuel Abel who was to be the colonel's assistant. Colonel was a very cold man and was too preoccupied with the fort and his soldiers to pay any attention to his wife. Dolores felt neglected and mistreated so she sought the love of another man and that man was, Captain Abella. One day when Abella was reporting for his daily meeting, Ablia was shaking Marty's when he smelled his wife's perfume on Ablia and the colonel knew they were having an affair. The day after, Dolores and Ablia were nowhere to be found. When asked about them Colonel Marty said that Dolores became suddenly ill and went to her aunts to recover, but would be moving back to Spain to be with family. And Abella was sent back to Cuba on a special assignment. Reports of smelling a sweet, flowery perfume and feeling if they are being watched. The CEO and general manager of Ghost City Tours were visiting St. Augustine on business and they decided to take pictures at night. While taking pictures, they saw someone walking over the drawbridge. They both said this person was average height and build, and a brisk walker. They waited for him to pass so they could continue to take pictures. When they realized that no one walked into the Castillo, they looked back over there, and none was there. They just saw an apparition. The Biltmore Hotel, Coral Gables. Built in 1926 by George Merrick, the hotel was host to many shows, galas, golf tournaments, and water shows. Gangster Thomas Fatty Walsh was shot and killed by another gangster on the 13th floor at a party. During World War II, 
the federal government turned the hotel into a military hospital. After the war, it continued to be a hospital for vets. When the hospital closed in 1968, it was abandoned. University of Miami made the Biltmore its first home in 1952. In 1983 the city of Coral Gables put $55 million into renovating the hotel and it was reopened in 1987. The hotel was placed on the National Registry of Historic Places in 1997. Linda Spitzer started telling ghost stories every Thursday night in the lobby. Guests have made reports of hearing loud party music at 2 a.m. and no one in the room. A woman reported her pillow being pushed down by an unseen hand in the middle of the night, and lamps would be unplugged when no one was in the room, and huge furniture that would take two or three people to move would move on its own. The Vinoy Renaissance St. Petersburg Resort and Golf Club, St. Petersburg Built in 1925 by Henry Taylor, it was a training base for soldiers during World War II. Reopened after the war but closed in the 1970s and placed on the National Registry of Historic Places in 1978, it sat empty and in ruins until the $93 million restoration saved it. It reopened in 1992 with a spa, the hotel was redesigned, and the rooms were updated. Reports of a woman, believed to be Jean Elliott, have been seen on the fifth floor, where she fell to her demise during a nasty divorce from her husband. Others believe it to be, Annie Gadsden, Elliot's maid, who claimed Jean Elliot's suicide was murder. Gadsden was never seen again after she bought a one-way ticket to Europe right before the trial. J.P. Williamson was the man who owned the land the hotel was built on. His apparition has been seen in the old part of the hotel. Be warned, you are not alone when you venture in the hotel's elevators. A man sharply dressed in a tuxedo haunts the elevators. He makes the elevators stop without request from the riders and the doors open on the fifth floor to an empty hallway. Guests have reported hearing music from Paul Whitman in an otherwise empty ballroom. Casadega Spiritualist Camp, Casadega Built in 1901 as a boarding house and hotel for the town's spiritualist camp, burnt down in 1925 and was rebuilt in 1927. Diana Morn bought the hotel in 1979. Diana, as well as other guests, have reported seeing an almost transparent man in a suit standing in the main lobby stairway. Children are not permitted to stay in the hotel overnight in order for the guests to be able to meditate or have a quiet retreat. But, Guests often report hearing the disembodied sounds of a little boy and girl playing in the hallways and hearing the tinkling of tricycle bells. People often photograph orbs in the hallways and guest rooms. The Casadega Hotel is home to many of Florida's psychic community as well as many unseen guests. Miami City Cemetery, Miami the Miami City Cemetery was used as a gravesite for African American and Black Bahamians but there is no record of who was buried there before 1897. The first recorded funeral was of Graham Branscombe, a 24-year-old white Englishman who died of consumption. Julia Tuttle was a businesswoman who owned the property on which Miami was built, she died 1898. Many feel as if they are being watched when they visit her grave and her spirit has been seen many times by thrill-seekers and vandals breaking into the cemetery at night. Carrie Barrett Miller's husband bought an altar, placed her body over it, and then poured concrete over her body. Her headstone reads, The body of Carrie Barrett Miller was molded in this solid block of concrete. December 4, 1926. After her body has gone to dust, her sleeping form will remain. People say they can hear scratching and pounding coming from inside her concrete-covered altar. The Old Davy School, Davy, Opened in 1918 and was the first permanent school in the Everglades. The school was added to the National Register of Historic Places in 1988. In 2008 the school reopened as the Old Davy School Historical Museum. There have been reports of disembodied voices, feelings of being watched and followed. There is an EVP recording of a ghost responding with the word, math, when asked what subject they taught. The Don Cesar Hotel, St. Pete Beach. 
most haunted hotel in all of Tampa. Thomas Rowe traveled to Spain where he met the love of his life, Lucinda. They fell in love on the beachfront of a pink hotel where they promised to marry and come back to this hotel for their honeymoon. However, Lucinda's mother disapproved and wouldn't let her marry Roe. Roe went back home to St. Petersburg, Florida where he purchased 80 acres of land, hired Henry DuPont and Carlton Beard. Together they erected the Don Cesar Hotel. F. Scott Fitzgerald, Clarence Darrow, Al Capone, Lou Gehrig, and President Franklin D. Roosevelt stayed at the hotel. Upon Roe's sudden death in 1940, the hotel fell into disrepair. During World War II, the U.S. purchased the hotel and converted it into a military hospital and when the war ended it served as administrative offices for the United States Veterans Affairs. 1967 the VA moved out and the hotel was up for demolition, but the local residents demanded otherwise. Their demands were met when the Holiday Inn purchased the hotel in November of 1937. When Roe passed, he still had not heard from his love, Lucinda. He walked up and down the shoreline looking for her while alive. They were, however, reunited in the afterlife. A man was staying at the hotel after his wife's passing. He and his wife visited the Don Cesar yearly since their honeymoon in the 1790s. This was the first summer after his wife passed that he stayed there. The man had checked into the suit he and his wife always occupied. He quickly changed into his swimsuit and headed for the beach. The beach was covered with young couples. Frustrated, the man made his way down shoreline where he saw an older man and woman walking half on the sand, half in the water. They seemed to be gliding along the waterline so gracefully. On second look their feet didn't touch the water and they were almost transparent. The man looked around in panic to see if anyone else was seeing what he was seeing. He looked back at the couple only to discover they had vanished into thin air. May Stringer House, Brooksville. In 1855, John L. May built the then, four-room home for his wife, and two daughters. John died of tuberculosis three years later. His wife, Morena, stayed in the home and remarried to Frank Sazen, a Confederate soldier. She died giving birth to the couple's child in 1869. The child died at age three. Sheldon Stringer later owned the house and his family lived there for three generations and expanded the house into 14 rooms across four stories. Reports of Morena May walking about the home and hearing her daughter cry out for her mother. Mr. Nasty, the resident angry spirit has been known to curse people. Workers have heard footsteps and voices coming from empty rooms, witnessed cold spots, mists, eerie shadows, moving shadows, glowing orbs of lights, and the sounds of a child crying. Lake Worth Playhouse, Lake Worth Built by Lucian and Clarence Oakley in 1924, they were brothers. Rumored to be haunted by Lucian Oakley. Reports of people seeing his ghost in mirrors, his hand prints on the walls, and hearing footsteps on an empty catwalk.